But what have we got to complain about? Because our Father will meet every need. Like I say, I didn't have a good week. And I complained. And I said, and I, I just asked the Lord, you know, you have got to, well, I didn't ask the Lord. I told the Lord, you've got to do something. And what I see about Moses here, he talked, do you know how Moses talked to the Lord? I'm going to tell you. There is a scripture that, that God was so displeased with the people. He said, I am going to kill all the people except you, Moses. And Moses said, you can't do that. Why? If you're going to kill them, you kill me too. I don't talk to the Lord that, good, that bad, but sometimes I do get kind of raunchy with him. But this displeased him because the people, what has he done to these people? He had brought them out. He had fed them. He had protected them. He had made a way for them. Doesn't that sound like us? Yes. And still we complain. I should say, still I complain. Okay. And his anger was kindled. Kindled mean it, it kind of lit him up. When you kindle something, you start, you start something. And he, he didn't like it. And you think what you do when God gets mad, he could just zap you out, let me tell you. But he won't. And then it goes on and it says... And the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Usually, when you talk about fire in the Lord, you're talking about judgment. When I looked this up, it's talking about correcting. He was correcting them. He got, he got mad because he got upset because of what they were doing and all that he had done from them. He got tired of it. Can you imagine if, if this bothered God how much it did to Moses? And consumed them that were in the other parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire quenched. The Holy Spirit calmed things. But he was talking. He, Moses talked to the Lord, and he complained to the Lord. And the multitude, mixed multitude, verse Let's see, verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Let me tell you, God had fed him manna. That was not what they wanted now. They got tired of it. How many eats all the time the same thing? You get tired of it. So you go and you get something else. I'm tired of eating this. I'm going to go get me something else. They got tired of what God was feeding them. Do you get tired of what God feeds you? I was just talking to uh, Beth and I was talking to Nancy. You know, this is going to take a long time and I hope you guys don't get tired. But if you do, let me know. Because I'm going to stay on this till the end and it's going to be a long time. Because there's so much to know about the Holy Spirit. So much. And so, Moses gets mad. And he tells the Lord, is this what you put me in here for? I've got to put up with these people. Do you think that I, and you can read all this, do you think that I fathered them? Is they, are they my responsibility? Why are you doing this to me? Now, let me tell you. How many of us has had troubles? Problems? How many of us says, Lord, why? Why are you doing it? Why are you letting it? You see, God doesn't do it to us. He allows it to happen to us for a purpose. But we blame him. We blame God when things go wrong. I didn't blame God that what I went through this week, but I was not happy, and God knew it. And so did a lot of other people. And, he, and Moses said, listen, is this what you did? Is this what, why you had me here is for I can take all this stuff? I, where am I going to get the flesh from? Where am I going to get this from? Can I use you as, uh, as an example, Chris? Because you're a pastor. And he, he does this. People come and, and if they get stepped on, 
by his preaching, they're picking on him. It's like a little old lady that sat back in the, in the, in the pew in a, in a church. And when the preacher was preaching, he, she saw her, Amen, preacher, preach it! Amen, preacher, preach it! And then he started to get on to what she had. And she said, well, I go. He was preaching. Now he's praying. And that's what we do. We find somebody else to blame for our problems. We blame the devil. He, he just loves it. Even when it's not even his fault. So Moses was saying, listen, Lord, you put, did this the way you put them? Did you give me these people to make me like this? Did you put all this on me for one purpose and that's to drive me nuts? I can't feed them flesh. Yet they're complaining to me. He can't do anything, but we complain to him. Your wife can't do anything, but you complain to her. You can't do anything, so she complains to you. We always complain. All the time. And Moses said, I'm fed up with it. I am fed up with it. Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? Verse 11. And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of these people upon me? Why did you pick me? Why did you do that? Why did you put me in this place? Well, he picked you because he had something that you can do. That's why he picked you. That's why he enables the Holy Spirit to talk to you, to listen to you, to lead you and guide you and direct you and show you where you need to go and what you need to say. And the Holy Spirit today does the same thing that the Holy Spirit did back then. Verse 17, and I will come down, the Lord said, and I will come down and talk with thee. Because he said, listen, I need help. I need help. Let's go back to verse 16. And the Lord said unto me, Moses, gather unto me seventy men, the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and of officers, and over them, And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. You see, he said, listen, I am going to give you help. I am going to give you help. But you pick the people that the millions of people know that they're the leaders of the church. They're the leaders and and they know these people. That's why you have friends in this church that you can go to because the Bible says pray for one another. Bear one another's bur- burdens because sometimes burdens get too hard that you cannot cake on your own. So the first thing we do is we run to somebody and say, oh, pray for me. But before that, it says those who are afflicted, let the, him Pray. So the help comes when you cannot stand it. The help comes when the burden gets too bad and you cannot take it on your own. This is the way Moses was. He was in a spot. He was worn down. And I want to tell you, that man probably gets worn down more than we know. It is a heavy burden to be a pastor of the church. It is. And we just lay things upon him and upon him and upon him. Listen, he is not God. He is one who works for God, and we are here to be his helpers. That means if you have a slight problem, then you go to the Lord and you pray about it, because that's what the Bible said. Those that are afflicted, let him pray. That means if you have a headache, you pray. Don't call that man. You pray. If you have a problem with finances, you pray. Then, if you get burdened down, then you call that man. And he puts it on the prayer list, and then we help you to bear the burdens. 
And Moses was in that place right now. And so the Lord said, get the men in here. And I, Now this was interesting to me. And I will come down and talk with them. I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it up on them. I thought that was interesting. He put the spirit upon Moses, but the men didn't have it. And in order to do God's work, you must have the spirit of God in you. The Spirit of God comes in you when you get saved. You have become, you have the Spirit of Jesus in you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit causes us to receive the power. He didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He had the Spirit upon him. And the Lord, and I thought this was so interesting, he said, you bring those people, he must have had a lot of spirit upon him, because you bring those people, and I will talk to them, and I will take some of your spirit, not his personal spirit, but the Holy Spirit that I have put upon you, and I will put it upon them so that they can do the work with you. Listen, if you plan to do any work, Anywhere for the Lord, you have to have the Spirit within you. You have to. Because the Spirit is here to glorify Jesus. And everything He does, everything He tells us to do, we give thanks to Jesus. So I don't know how you thought, but I thought this was I thought this was really something. And I will put will put it upon them. They shall bear the burdens of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. That's what the word says. The word says if you are afflicted pray but it also says bear one another's burden that doesn't mean that you go around and talk about people's burdens that means if they tell you you just shut your mouth and pray about it and I know we all think we need to know to pray about it no we don't You see, you're not going to do anything anyway. You're an instrument. You're the servant that God has called out to do. And he has put the baptism in you. And if you're not baptized, you still have the Spirit of God in you to do the work. You see how the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, worked in these people in the Old Testament? You you see, he did, did not come just happened when Christ died. He always has been. And this is what I'm trying to show, that he has been in all the people's life that God has chosen to be a servant. Because when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you are for service. Because he gives you the power. He gives you the knowledge. He gives you understanding. He gives you patience. I don't go there very often because he's still working with me, but he's doing better. I should say I'm doing better because I'm hard-headed, and it's hard for me to be patient. And instead of getting upset for five minutes, sometimes it takes five hours. This week it took about three days. So I said, thank you, Lord, before I got angry said, thank you, Lord. But my two boys, they are so mild-mannered, but even Matt got upset this week. Let me tell you, God knows what he's doing. So this is what it is with Moses, and this is what I'm telling you. But, and God anointed him up on him, put his, his uh, Holy Spirit up on him. Let's go to verse 29 and see what it says. And Moses said unto him. What is that word? Even, evenest thou for my sake, 
would God that all these people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. What would I do? How did I rate? I would love to have all people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He said, why would he do this? But I would have all of the prophets to have the Spirit of God. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Moses said, I wish that they all, all the prophets, all the people that did the works of God had the Holy Spirit upon them. Don't we know that the Holy Spirit is what we need to live a holy life, a life that's pleasing to God? We can't do it on our own. It's he that helps us. I'm telling you, we need to know that it's the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us and shows us the way. Now, if you will, turn to Judges. Now, I must tell you here, I'm going to teach you something that's not that I don't know. I do know it, but I left my notes at home, so I'm going to fumble around here, I think. I come here early enough that I can go through this before I come in here. And as I went through, I lost first my first page of notes. So I'm doing this by memory. We're going to be talking about Samson. Samson, as you know, was a man chosen of God. An angel, if you were to read the Bible, or, or to read chapter 13, I believe it is, that he was, an angel came and announced to his parents, who was, could not have kids, that they were going to have a son. And they had this boy, and his name they called Samson. And in chapter 2, or chapter 2, chapter 12, verse, nope, let me see. See, I told you, 13, but I want to find the, the, okay. In chapter 13, verse 24, it says, And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. God had a work for Samson to do before he was even born. God has something for us to do before you were born. Before he was born, the angel came down and told his parents they was going to have a son. Now, if you will read the previous, if you will read the, uh, the chapters, it will say that God had sent the angel to tell them how she should live and what to expect. Because this boy was going to grow up to be a servant of the Lord. And it said he grew. I want to tell you, when my boys were small, I always prayed that God would bless them, that he would help them to make good decisions. And when they were out of my sight that he would always keep his hand upon them. And they grew up to be fine young men. If you have kids, if you have grandkids, you need to pray that God will help them make good decisions. And I told this to my niece, and she said, oh, I never thought about bringing to, uh, to pray like that. Listen, they're going to have to make a lot of decisions. And they're going to be, whatever they decide, may make them or break them. And if the Holy Spirit is there teaching them and leading them, you will have good kids. But even when, and we will find here in Samson, God chose him. God anointed him. God sent him out. 
verse 25 says, And the Spirit of the Lord began to move on him at the time in the camp of Dan. And now I'm not going to go to the others. Anyway, when he was small. Then he grew up. Let me tell you. When you're small, you do what you're told. When you reach the age of 16, you become so smart. You think your parents are that, and right now your kids think that you may be the dumbest thing there is. But when they turn 21, they'll say, wow, you sure have smartened up. So Samson grew, just like he said, just like God said. He's going to grow, and he become big, and he become strong. That was the purpose. That was the purpose that God had for Samson. How do I know? Well, turn to go to 14, chapter 14. And Samson went down to Timothy and saw a woman, the daughter of Philistines. Now, let me tell you. Right now, the Philistines ruled over Israel. And you don't go mix with the enemy. Well, where does he go? He goes to the enemy's camp. And he sees this pretty little woman. And so he falls in love with her. Love at first sight. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. But anyway, he goes back and he says, Daddy, I found me a woman. And she is... A Philistine. And his dad said, Oh, goody. No, he did not say that. He said, Why, why, a Philistine? Can't you find somebody here? That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Can you remember when your oldest child or whoever came and said, I'm going to get married? I had a time with it when they told me about Matt and Chasta. Oh, my goodness. Oh. But they turned out all right. But it wasn't, it wasn't easy for me to accept. So the father said, and he came up and told his father and his mother and I have seen a woman, and he tells how much he wants her. Verse 3, And this father, then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of the brethren? Can't you find somebody else? I had a rule in my house. I told the boys, Don't bring any dates home. I don't want to meet any of your girlfriends. I said, Why? I said, Because I will pick one that I like, and you won't marry her. So, I don't want to meet them. You just bring them in and say, this is her. And I'll say, fine. Then I'll decide if I like her or not. By then, it'll be too late. That's, that was the rule. I don't want to meet any of them. Because nobody agrees by what our kids want. Because we know better. Don't we? Sure we do. So they said, can't you find somebody? But his father and his mother, take note here, but his father and his mother knew not that it was the Lord that sought his, an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. God had this planned. He wanted him to do that. You say, wow, that's what I said. Why would God do it? It was God's plan. And whatever God's plan is what is right. He wanted to conquer the Israel or the, the Philistines. And it was his plan. And he said the, they didn't know that. But Samson was running right along what God wants. And maybe he didn't even know it. But that's what God wanted. God has a plan for you. And if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. And he'll say, oh, you want to do that? And you say, please, please. And then he'll say, fine, because you're a free will. You go do it. And then you will find yourself stuck out here, hanging at the end of the rope, no place to go but down. So if God has a plan for you, stick with it. 
because it's only trouble if you don't. So anyway, then, verse 5, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to meet the little lady, you know, and, and came to the vineyard, and there came a young lion. And we all know what happened. Samson goes down, he wanders off, like every kid does, and I don't know how old he was, but he was out walking around. And a lion, a young lion came up, and it said it rent him. Samson rent, the, that means he ripped him apart with his bare hands. And then it says, and the, but the Spirit of the Lord, you know, he's the one that gave him the strength. To conquer this thing. He is the one that gives us the strength to conquer our problems. That's what we need to know. The Holy Spirit is leading us and guiding us and showing us. And when we get in the bind, we need to know who our Father is. And we need to go home to our Father. And we need to say, listen, this is my problem. And he will rent it. He will tear it up and he will get it. I went to the pastor one day and I said, I want you to pray God will take this thing away from me. And she said, I can't do that. Why not? You are the pastor. She said, because if I pray that it be taken away from you, it will just pop up again down the road. People, always go through your problems with the Lord. Because the Lord says, you will be more than a conqueror. We need to know this. And we need to know that it's the Holy Spirit that causes us to be more than a conqueror. Conquer. We can destroy it and be done with it. So he goes back and he doesn't tell his parents about this. So they go down and they meet this little lady. And this is where Samson begins to toy with the people. They have a little feast. And he says, I have a riddle. And he tells it because after he killed the lion and he was going back, he was traveling from one place to the other, there was a bee thing in this carcass and he took a stick in, or a piece of the lion and ate the, the honey. So he, this is his riddle. And he says, if you can figure it out, I will give you, and it says three sheets, but I figured, I read and, and figured, found out that that meant shirts and a whole outfit. And, but if you cannot, then you give me the shirts and the outfits. Well, how are they supposed to know? Because he's not told anybody. So they don't know. They gave him seven days. Well, they don't know. And his wife... Men, you listen. When you have secrets, don't tell your wife. Because sometimes somebody talks to your wife and says, i got something to say. I can't tell you now, but I will tell you later. It's a, well, let me tell you, wives, men do the same thing. There it is. I hear that. You hear the bell? No, not hallelujah. <laughs> she wants this thing to end. She wants this... She wants this class to end. <laughs> okay. This, I will end here. This is just the beginning of Samson's downfall. Because he wanders away. And he starts to toy with people. Listen, if you want to win somebody for God, you do not toy with them. So anyway, he tells them about this riddle, but they can't figure it out. So they go to the Philistine wife, and they said, you tell us. You tell us. We can't figure this away. So he tells his wife, and of course she goes and tells the Philistine people. And they come back, and Samson gets mad. Now, have we ever been mad? Well, we're baptizing the Holy Spirit, but do we get mad? 
I get mad. It says, be angry and sin not. So I'm careful of the last part. I don't care about the first part. I could get mad. But I better watch what I do because it says, and sin not. So he gets angry. And I know you all know this. If you've read this before, you all know. He gets, what, ten foxes and he tells, uh, puts a fire on their tail and, and he burns down everything. Now war is proclaimed. And they said, why did you do that? And he said, because you got the answer to my wife. And this is payback. And let me tell you, his life, who God blessed, gets worse and worse because he does not stick close to the Lord. Let me tell you, if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit, you can ask yourself sometimes, why did I do this? If you listen to the Holy Spirit, he will keep you on the path that you should go. Let me tell you. God has put the Holy Spirit here so that he will lead us and guide us and teach us and and give us what we need, strength, encouragement. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And I'm so glad that he gives it to dwell in us and does not put it upon us because if somebody else needs it, he may take it from me and give it to somebody else. But if it's in me, it's mine And I keep it. And I use it. And that's the way it is with the Holy Spirit. You need to allow him to show you what to do. You need to make it a matter of prayer. And you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talks in many ways. Sometimes he can speak audibly. Sometimes he just whispers. Sometimes he gives you a thought. But you need to know how the Holy Spirit works. We're going to go back to Samson next week, so you can read that. Read 14, 15, and 16 if you want. That way you will know if I'm teaching it right, and when the bell rings, you won't say, Amen. (laughs) Let's stand. (laughs) Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this class, and Lord, I do appreciate every one of them that comes. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would be with them, and Lord, lead, guide, and direct them in the path that you would have them to go. I ask, Lord, that you would bless each and every one of them. Bless Chris as he brings forth the message. Bless the songs and the song leaders and and everyone who takes part in the service, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be here and and have him working in in our service today. And I ask these things in your name. And everyone said, Amen.